So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Fusion 360 Increment Webinar Core Series. Thank you for joining today. CNC manufacturing using Fusion 360 CAM session. Kripal has joined as our expert for today, and he works as a post-processing consultant for Autodesk for Autodesk India. Today, he will demonstrate how simple and easy it is to use Fusion 360 CAM to create multi-axis toolpath. Welcome, Krupal. Thank you so much for taking time and being here with us. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Fusion 360 increment course series. And thank you for joining CNC Manufacturing using Fusion 360 CAM webinar. My name is Krupal Wala. I am from Customer Advocacy Organization, Autodesk. I am a mechanical engineer with over 8 years of strong background in CAD CAM. I am working as an associate technical consultant post processor with Autodesk. In the past, I worked with the machine tool industry as a senior engineer in process engineering. And I have advanced knowledge of defining manufacturing process, CNC programming, surface treatment, post processor, machine tool probing, robotics, cutting tool selections, fixture validation, routing, wheel of material and costing. Today my goal with this presentation is to give you an understanding of Fusion 360 CAM capabilities and features. This webinar is more focused on Fusion 360 CAM fundamentals for new and current users by investigating workflow in a CAM workspace. Demonstrating how simple it is to use Fusion CAM, we will create 2D operation with the geometry selection and multi-axis operation that drives the tool over the toolpath. Attendees will learn how to create the setup, tool, toolpath, verify the toolpath with the full of stock, create the setup sheet and post-process the G-code for their machines. This fundamental concept will help you to understand the benefit of truly integrated CAD CAM using Fusion 360. To seamlessly update all the toolpaths when the CAD revision or design changes are required. Today's agenda is going to be this. What is a Fusion 360? Where we see Fusion 360 capabilities overview. Any CAD advanced seamless tool. Fusion manufacturing workspace. General process workflow. Software demonstration. In this, we will see a milling capabilities and it's going to be the focus of my demonstration today. Later we will talk about where we can get the learning material from resources. And at the end we have a Q&A session. Before moving to sessions, I would like to share an experience of a Fusion 360 user. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Dale Yamada, owner-operator of MJK Performance. Uh, MJK Performance specializes in bolt-on componentry on touring bikes, baggers. I wanted a chopper, like a handmade motorcycle, but I couldn't afford a shop to make me one, so I went and made my own. Everything started out of my garage. I didn't know where it was going to take off from there, I just wanted to start somewhere. When you evolve, you, you see things that you want to conquer, but you have to have certain machines to help you with that, to get that look or to get that feel. Um, and uh, that's when I came about the CNC, wanting a CNC machine. So in March of 2016, I desperately needed some CNC machine work done on a particular part to build uh, a motorcycle that I was making. And uh, that's when I met Phil Butterworth through social media. We tried Fusion in the very beginning uh, as, a, as a trial basis, and um, I didn't know how to program. I still don't know how to properly program. I'm learning off of Phil, so it's it's ridiculously easy to use. <laughs> like, and he's teaching me, and I've never I've never had any programming experience whatsoever. As soon as people found out I had a CNC machine um, and we started designing these parts, it was like opening floodgates. Couldn't believe how fast it took off. We purchased the Herco, then we purchased the Herco Turning Center, um, and, and things kept going so rapid and so quickly 
we had to think about getting a new facility. That's where we are now. Uh, as soon as we moved in here, we already have plans to get another machine, a pallet machine, so we can produce more parts, uh, uh, multiple parts, and utilize our time better. There's only two of us, so uh, time is everything. My first motorcycle I ever wanted to build, I, I envisioned in my head. And that vision was quickly demolished by people that had their own thoughts and desires of what they wanted, not able to cater to what I wanted to do. If you got enough want and enough desire and enough passion towards something, it, it's, then it makes unpainable. Especially when you have like today's software, today's machines, today's technology that's moving so rapidly, you can take advantage of all these things if you just open up your mind and, and put all that effort towards it. Dave has a wonderful chopper bike workshop and in his workshop he has a turning and multi-axis machine. He doesn't have a programming knowledge but by just seeing someone is using the fusion in his workshop he has noted that how easy to use a fusion and how fast it is. By using the fusion 360 he has saved a lot of machining time with the use of fusion. We all know time is everything. Now let's begin our session. First we need to ask a simple question. What is a Fusion 360 and what does it do? So let's take a look at Fusion 360 Workspaces video. What is Fusion 360? Is it a cloud-enabled collaboration platform that enables designers to instantly share, review project data, manage version, find where use and share ideas on any device at any time? Is it a 3 can application with both freeform and solid model tools seamlessly integrated into one application? Is it a 3D animation and rendering application? Is it the first cloud enabled tool to provide 2D drawing capabilities? Is it simulation software or is it a CAM application for turning and milling operations? This is what you need to know about Fusion 360. It's not any one of those things. It's all of those things. It's the next generation product innovation platform designed to work on Mac, PC, and mobile devices. So come on. As we have seen, Fusion has a design capabilities, manufacturing capabilities, simulation, documentation capabilities. By having a multiple disciplines in one package, there is no need to export data from one package to another. Past experience decades that this is a, always a bottleneck in industry being able to transfer data. So make a change into the design or maybe a change in the same, same per size or remove a hole. Respect to these changes, manufacturing workspace automatically update the tool path. Making a change in one space, it update the rest. With all these changes and all availability in one package, end-to-end -end product development becomes seamless. Enigid allow us to take a model file from one other CAD software in their original format and use them directly in the Fusion 360 design. Not only that, whenever changes come in the native software, automatically it gets updated in Fusion 360. In this prerogated video, we will see what does AnyCAD do. AnyCAD allow you to work with the non-native Fusion data. Here we can see user can import any other CAD data in Fusion without using any external utility for exchanging the data. You can see it supports most of the CAD file format like Katia, Creo, Inventor, etc. Currently, I am importing one of the Inventor CAD file once you can open the file, it get updated inside the cloud. Now you can see model. It holds the metadata like color, material, and CAD model property, and etc. Not only that, I have created some CAM toolpath inside the manufacturing workspace. Now I get a call from my design team, and they are saying we have a design change. 
They are increasing the pocket size a little bit in Inventor and saving the file into Cloud. If I get back to Fusion, you can see the, in the data panel something is changed. Also, if you go back to Design Space, you will get a little warning but over there. If you click that, it will pull all the design changes and update inside the Fusion. Also, if you go back to Manufacturing Workspace, you can see the toolpath having a red light. It's a red warning that what does it mean? It needs to regenerate. You can simply click, hit the Ctrl G to update the toolpath. Think about this if you are using other game software, it has a 50 number of toolpaths and if design team call you and say design change, it will be a very frustrating and you have a redo all these things again. But with the fusion, hit the Ctrl G, it will update the all the toolpaths automatically. As I said before, AnyCAD is a powerful collaborative tool which makes your design team closer to your manufacturing team. Also, we have a desktop connector utility which works with other CAD file format seamlessly. Fusion 360 Layout Use the data panel to access your design and manage your project. Workspace which allow to us access one workspace to other workspace. For browser and toolbar, I will give a detail in Game demo. Manufacturing capabilities of Fusion. These include milling, turning, turn mill, profile cutting, and additives. In this workspace, milling capabilities is going to be the focus of my presentation today. Let's take a look of manufacturing workflow. Open a design or drawing file from your local drive or a project from data panel or user can create a new CAD file from design workspace. Setup. This selection will help you to define the machine, work model, stock size, fixtures, set the work coordinate system as a zero. Define operation. In this step, we define the tool, cutting parameters, tool path, area of machining, tour orientation, depth of cut, direction of cut, etc, etc. Toolpath simulation. We get a preview of what's going to happen when we run this toolpath in our machine. Also, we can verify the toolpath before handling the generated NC program to a machine operator. To communicate with the machine, we need an NC program. I can choose from wide variety of post processor which I download free of course. All the major machine tool vendor are supports and available in post library which give you more programming flexibility. Let's jump into Fusion 360 for milling demonstration. Now we are inside Autodesk Fusion 360. First I will give you an overview of Fusion interface. By clicking the workspace switch we can change current workspace to selected workspace. Now we are inside the manufacturing workspace. In the browser area, we can access the setups, toolpaths, and NC program. By clicking the toolbar, we can access setups, toolpath strategies, tool library, and infection area. From the ribbon bar, we can access the different capabilities of manufacturing workspace. In this demo, I will demonstrate the manufacturing workflow comparison between toolpath strategies and key features of Fusion 360. The first step of the workflow open the project. So I will open the aerospace housing project from my data panel. Now our project is open and let's hide the created setups, NC toolpaths and NC program. The second step of the workflow is define the job setup. First we need to click on the setup drop down menu and select any setup or we can simply choose the 
icon of the setup. Now we are inside the setup. First, we will choose the machine from Fusion Machine Tool Library. We can filter the capabilities and choose Desire Vendor from the drop down menu. We can select the machine type from the list. The next step is define the operation type. As we already have selected the machine, so it will sync the data from the machine type. But if user don't want to choose any machine from the machine selection, they can skip the step step and choose the operation type from here. The third step is the defined work coordinate system. To define the XYZ direction, we can select the surfaces from the orientation. To set the origin location, we can select the number of options from this drop down menu. So I will select the Z axis perpendicular to my top face. and X axis perpendicular to side face. And set coordinate system at the top of the job. So now we can see my XYZ is set at the top of the model and center of the job. The next step is define the model. So we have selected our body as a model. And the last one is picture. If a user want to access or use the fixture, you can simply select it from here to avoid the collision between tool and model file. The second tab stock based on our raw material size and set, we can choose different part of stock from drop down menu. For this type of shape, I will choose relative size of cylinder. We can see the stock is not aligned with the model file. To align that, I will give you a reference axis. Now we can see the stock is aligned with the model. To expand the size of the stock, we can enter the data from these options. For the cutting force analysis, we can enter the data here. And at the end, we have stock dimension. Post processor tab, we can define the program number and work offset number. Zero will work at the G54. To get G55, I will set WCS as 1. Now the third step of the workflow is to define the operation. To remove the excess material from the top, I will choose Fast Mint Strategy. Now toolpath is open. And here we can see the five tabs. Let's take a look of these five tabs in the slide. In the first tab, we can select the tool, cutting tool and type of coolant. The second step is the geometry. In this step, we can define the area of machining. Third one is height. We can set or adjust the machining height based on our selection. In the pass step, we can control the tool path direction, depth of cut, tool engagement with the workpiece, tool extension, etc. And the last one is linking. Here we can specify how the cutter moves down to each tool path and connection between the curve. These five steps remain constant in all toolpath setups. Let's back to Fusion. Let's select a tool from the Fusion tool library. Fusion has a pre-installed tool library. We can choose different categories of tools by selecting the category and select a type of tool. So I will click new tool. By clicking the plus icon, we can select number of tool type. So I will choose the first me. Let's give some description over here. In the cutter data, we can define the number of insert tool material and define the geometry, details, and etc. 
we can add the sang and folder from the pre-installed library. We can set the cutting parameter and set the coolant and set the tool number. Now our tool is ready for machining. In the geometry tab, we no need to define the any stock and the geometry because we are using the plus mid. It will consider a stock as a geometry. Third tab is height. At the start and end of the tool path, tool reach at this height. In the retract height is where tool move in rapid before the cutting move. And the third one is feed height. Tool enter in feed rate. First one is top height, top of the cut, and the bottom height is a final finishing height. In pass step, we can define the direction of cut. We can extend the tool path. Let's give a 25 mm step over. We can set multiple depth of cut. We can choose both direction and even step down. Let's send it to tool path. Now our toolpath is generated, but we can see in this our project we have a closed pocket, circular pocket, cylindrical surface, drilling, multiple operation. We have cylindrical shape in our model file. To do a machining on that area, we have two quick 2D strategies, bore and circular. Let's create bore toolpath. First, I will choose tool from the tool library. Define my geometry outer face. Select bottom height as the top of the bed. And generate the toolpath. Now, I will create the circular toolpath using create derive operation. Derive operation take associate selection and transfer them to new toolpaths. It will save toolpath setup time. And here we can see the tool, geometry, heights and other parameters remain same like the derive one. Let's give the leading distance. Now our board toolpath are generated and ready for the simulation. Let's simulate the board strategy. The board strategy is in helical motion. So let's simulate the toolpath. Here we can see the toolpath direction in, in circular motion, but it's in helical way. Now let's compare with the circular one. The circular strategy is in circular motion, but it will circulate and then it will take the depth of cut. So this is the difference between the circular and bore strategies. Now we will create 2D adaptive and 2D procket strategy and later we will compare both strategy. I will suggest everyone to use these two strategy for closed loop pocket. Let's create 2D pocket strategy. Select the tool from tool library. I will select that add tool. Choose the pocket area. Rest of the things look fine. Let's center the tool path. For the adaptive, I will use Create a derive operation and simply generate the toolpath. Let's simulate each toolpath and see the difference.
let's start the simulation we can see the engagement between tool and material is not constant at the corner it goes up to 50% Let's simulate adaptive. In this strategy, we can see the engagement between tool path and tool. It's remain constant. Let's deep dive through the presentation slide. Adaptive pocketing give a high speed machining and more deeper cut at high feed. We are taking a larger cut on those corners. You can see we are engaging more tool, but it's still going to consistent. Not only that, it will maintain that same amount of engagement for every passes. It keeps constant tool load, chip thickness and material removal rate. In traditional one, tool is cutting on the half of diameter. We are engaging the very large portion of end mill. Due to that, it will increase the heat and here. Let's take to the fusion. We can see the bigger tool is not able to read the smaller portion of the pocket area. Let's measure distance between two curve. It's a 5.5 mm. So I have to use smaller tool than 5 mm. Let's create a tool path setup. But I want to make sure that Smaller tools should not get into that area where bigger tool already did their job. I will select the dia 4mm tool and I will choose Resh machining and I will give the reference of my previous tool. Let's generate the tool path and see the difference. A question arises where to use 2D and 3D strategy. 2D strategy are based on the curve and geometry, where 3D is based on the surface. If you want to remove excess amount of material from the stock, then I will suggest to use 3D. It will consider the model surfaces and it has more boundary and tool part option. So let's create 3D adaptive theory strategy. Select the tool from library. In geometry tab, we can see we have more option. We can choose and select the tool containment and select the boundary. So for this, I will select the bottom of the pocket, generate the tool path. Now I will create a 2D tool path, select same tool and same geometry. Centered the tool path. Let's compare. In 3D adaptive, you can see it did the machining at the top of the pocket. Let's compare with the 2D. In 2D, we can see it's ignoring the surface of the pocket and considering the geometry as a bottom. So in the 2D tool path, it's not consider any surface and a model file. One more feature I want to highlight it here is compare and edit. The manufacturing workspace allow us to compare and edit multiple operations simultaneously from the single dialog, even when the operations are from the different machining strategies. Since many operations has a lot of parameters, it is possible to filter the list using the filtering control at the bottom of the dialog box. Imagine I have created 65 number of toolpaths in a single project and my supervisor has given instruction to change the cutting direction of all the boring toolpath. Due to this feature, we can simply edit and update the toolpath in a single click. 
let's verify is it updated or not let's simulate the toolpath here we can see toolpath is updated with the help of compare and edit the feature now let's create a drilling cycle we can simply measure the hole dia by dragging the cursor over the hole let's select the tool in geometry type select the hole face for the remaining hole i will select same dia hole feature it will sync and select the rest number of hole not only that we can see we have a chamber over the hole to merge with the hole we can simply choose over merge hole segment it will consider as a single segment in the cycle type we have this number of cycle type option available in the toolpath we can choose based on our requirement let's enter the toolpath now i will create 2d chamber good let's select the geometry generate the toolpath Let's jump to the side fish machine and learn the tool orientation functionality. We will create the tool path for this phase. For that, I will choose the 3D pocket strategy. Select the tool from the library. I will select the dia 60 mm flat end mill. In geometry tab, we have not a tool orientation. This functionality is available in many toolpaths already. Let's create new work plane for this phase. I will set my work coordinate system at the center of this pocket. Now select the geometry. will set my bottom height on top of the pocket top height on the edge the structure thing looks fine let's generate the tool path now i will create the drilling tool path for the same phase Choose a longer tool for the whole system. Turn on the tool orientation. Set the work plane. But here we can see the tool. Holes are intersecting with each other. Let's select the faces of the hole. Select the same diameter. From this toolpath, we can see the fusion has the capability to identify the features. But what about the other side face? For that, we have one option. We can simply choose new pattern from the setup. In the pattern tag, we have this number of option. We will choose. Circular pattern based on our job. We will give reference axis and give number of intensities as a seven. Now our pattern is ready, and I will choose drop this toolpath inside this pattern. We can see all the faces toolpath has been created.
one more feature I want to highlight is we can store the toolpath data. We can simply choose store as a template. So let's give a name. And let's use this template in the project. We can import the template, clicking the setup, press stop press, and generate the toolpath. Inside the toolpath, we can see tool, geometry, heights, everything remains same as we have given in the aerospace housing bracket. So it will store all the data which we have given in the toolpath. The first step of the workflow is toolpath simulation. We can select multiple toolpaths and set up and do the simulation. Inside the simulation, we can see the tool, toolpath and stop option. At the bottom, we can control the simulation speed. And we can jump to the next option also. By selecting the option, we can activate and deactivate the features. At the bottom, we have a live collision calculator. It's running on the bottom side. Let's look ahead and calculate the number of collision in the toolpath. By clicking the toolpath, we can see the preview of simulation. Let's select the toolpath. We can preview of what's going to happen when we run this simulation to our machine. The last step of the manufacturing workflow is the post -coding. For that, we need to create the NC program, where we can give the program name, choose machine capabilities, vendor and defined machine configuration. To add the specific parameter in the NC code, we can choose it from here. Let's select the parametric feed rate. In the operation, we can filter the toolpath and minimum tool change in the NC program. By hanging of the NC program, we can access the setup sheet. We can choose name and location. Now we can configure the setup sheet from drop down menu. By clicking the print icon, we can configure the page setup and print the setup sheet. Let's generate the NC program. Now our NC program is generated. Let's open it. Now we can see the vendor and model. Also, we can see the parametric feed rate which we have selected in the NC program setup. These are the NC codes for the, our two part setups. Let's take to Fusion. Now we have covered all the manufacturing workflow in the Fusion. Let's back to presentation. Post processor. To get the NC code to machine, 
Fusion 360 come with over 350 building post and supporting more than 100 vendors. If you can't find the one that works, there is also searchable online post library and active forum to help you to find the post you need. All the posts are open source if you have a little bit knowledge of JavaScript. You can customize and adjust the post right from the post dialog. We have an idea station you can request into through forum. We have a reseller all around the globe. You can contact them. They will do a job for you but it will be an cost option. To download the post from the library, you can search Fusion 360 post in search engine. So click on the post library auto Fusion 360. It will open the web page. Select the type of category machine and choose the vendor. And click on the download button. It will download the post. And you can use that post in your manufacturing workspace. Learning resources. We have uh, internal AU recordings and YouTube channels. Each source include video, step by step in tutorials and download the 3D model to help you to learn Fusion 360 at your own space. Summarize. Let's have a look what we need, what we learn. What is a Fusion 360? In a Video slide we have seen that Fusion has a CAD, CAM and CAD solutions. AnyCAD is a powerful collaboration tool. AnyCAD allows you to work with the non-native Fusion data and also it preserves your CAD data associations. So change made by a design engineer in native application are automatically synced in the Fusion 360. Fusion manufacturing capabilities in this course is we have seen the milling capabilities of fusion general process workflow we have learned five steps of manufacturing workflow and how each step play an important role and posting the nc code so let's take a look on uh, summary software demo session the first we have created setups tools tool paths and the pattern instances simulation setup sheet and posting the nc code from the fusion features we derived operation from previous toolpath we compare and edit the multiple toolpath calculate the toolpath in background live collision calculator auto merge whole segment and select the same diameter hole feature in drilling and template the toolpath to store the toolpath data Thank you everyone for your valuable time and hope this session has given some insight of manufacturing workspace, mainly on the milling side. I will be covering turning and turning capabilities in my next presentation on June 22nd. So please stay tuned for it. Thank you once again. Now I am opening the floor for Q&A sessions.